There is another V to do this. There's actually a fourth signature, which I hesitate to say because it's deprecated. It used to be used before, but we don't use it anymore, which is, which is this guy. Okay. Subscribe takes in a subscription. And what's a subscription? So what you have when you subscribe, right? When you do a subscribe, no matter how you subscribe, right? Let's say you just had this thing. It, this is true for all of those signatures. This is what we've been doing so far, right? We've been doing this. So what you're going to get back as a result is something called a subscription, disposable, sorry. What you're going to get back is a disposable. So basically what you have is a subscription that you can dispose. You're going to be like, I don't want this anymore, right? Let's say you've subscribed to something and it's taking its own time. It's, you know, I want to wait for 10 seconds. This is too much. I want to get out of here. So you can dispose. You can kill the subscription that's possible. Okay. So, you know, we have the first one, which is the item based thing. You have the error. You have the completion event. And then you have the fourth one, which is the subscriber. And then you can do something with this thing, right? This is deprecated, as you can see here. This is why I don't remember this thing because I never use this, okay? And you shouldn't be using this too. So and the reason for this is you're going to have to ask for data. It doesn't come otherwise. Then cover one in a bit. So don't use this fourth signature, even though you might see it in the Java docs. Okay. A lot of explanation to tell you something that you shouldn't use. So don't use it. There is one other way to subscribe without having to create all these individual lambdas. And that is by using an implementation of something called a base subscriber. Okay, there's something called base subscriber, which allows you to create implementations of classes, which has all this implementation, right? And it has like what to do when you get an item, what to do when a subscribe happens, what to do when a next happens, what to do when an error happens, right? You can create all those methods in one class and you pass that class instead, okay? Instead of the individual lambdas. And I'm going to demonstrate that over here, right? So this is something called base subscribe base subscriber. I'm going to create a class here. I'm going to say my subscriber, which is going to extend this base subscriber, which is a, a generic type. Okay. And this is going to, it's to have a bunch of methods here. Interesting. I thought I'd add them. Oh, I'm going to have to add the generic type there as well. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay. So here, now it's going to give me the import the class. This is from the uh, publisher. And here, you can implement a bunch of it's here. So there is a hook for each thing that could happen, right? So when, when a subscribe happens, you get a hook for it. When a next event is triggered, you get a hook for it. There's also not something that I've used a lot, but I'm just teaching it because you know, it's good to know. So you have a public wide hook on subscribe. Okay. It's like, what do you want to do when a subscription happens? Subscription subscription. Okay. Here I can do this time on println of subscribe happen. Okay. It's like, what do you want to do when the subscription happens? Similarly, there is a hook on next. Okay. Hook on next is when there is an event that is sent. Okay. That is usually using the on next. Okay. So here I'm going to get the value. Here, since it's generic, I'm not having an integer, like I can use this for anything else. So I'm going to have, what I'm going to get back is a value of type T. Okay. So this is 
the value, whatever this value is. Okay. So I'm going to say value dot to string received. Okay. So I'm getting a hook there. Now, the thing about a subscription subscriber object like this is that you are going to need to do what's referred to as a request. Okay. This is a little confusing to some people because what I'm going to show you looks very similar to the iterator pattern and the next, like, okay, give me next, give me next. It's basically the, the consumer, which is asking somebody to give next. Okay. So notice what happens when I do this. If I do it just like this, it's not going to work. Okay. So I'm going to show you. So what I need to do is create a new instance of this guy here. So this is how I subscribe to a flux. This is an alternative way of subscribing to a flux. So what I have here is instead of passing these lambdas directly over here, I'm creating a, a class which knows what to do for each one of those, what to do on subscribe, what to do on next, which is these two, right? This is the subscribe and this is the next. There's, there's an on error as well that you can put, like it's going to be methods on this class. And now I can create a new instance of this. So I'm going to do reactive sources dot get int numbers flux dot subscribe of new my subscriber. And I don't have to give the generic type because it's going to infer it from whatever is being passed. Okay. So this is going to do pretty much the same thing. Okay. Now let me comment this out. There is one extra thing that I have to do to get this to work, right? As is, if I run this, Let's say subscribe happened, but there are no values coming in. Okay. I'm basically saying when the subscription happens, print this, it's printed. But when the event is happening, when the next first data element is run, do this, that's not getting um, printed. Why is that? The reason is related to back pressure. So all of these subscriptions have a way of saying, how much data it is okay with receiving. It is not the same as give me next, right? It's not the same as give me one value. You're basically saying I'm okay handling 10 values. Give me 10 values whenever they are ready. Okay, but don't give me more than that because I might not be able to keep up, right? This could be a usage of your like, okay, I'm a new, I'm a new assembly line worker. I don't want to, I don't want you to just keep it. Hang on, go, go easy with me. Just give me. 10 elements to begin with, whenever they're ready, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not pulling it. You're still pushing, but I'm going to tell you, I'm okay with just 10 elements. Give me when they're ready. And then after that, I'm going to ask for more. Okay. So you need to ask for how many items you're okay with when you do this model. Okay. This is actually the reason why the other one was uh, deprecated. I told you that there is another signature where you can, you can get this and that part is deprecated because People would often forget to ask and it was like, oh, why is, this, why is this not working? So if you're doing this implementation, you need to ask for an item. Okay. If you don't ask for an item, you're not going to get that item. So you're going to ask for it by using a request method. Okay. You're going to request for, I'm going to say two. Give me two items when they're ready. It doesn't mean you have to give me two items. You have to give me two items now. Doesn't mean any of that. It says I'm okay with handling two items whenever they're ready. And give me those two items when they are, but until I request for more, don't give me it. I might still be working on this, all right? So this allows you to use your hook on next to request for more only when you're done, okay? So here, I'm gonna say request just one item. Give me just one item when you're ready, after, immediately after you subscribe, and I don't ask for more after that, okay? So now, now notice what happens, I'm gonna read on this. See, I get one, one received, but then it stopped because whoever's sending it knows that you're a new, you're a new assembly line worker. You're like, this guy has asked for just one item. So it's just sent me one. So even though there are more events happening there, it is not sending you because you haven't asked for more. Okay. At some point during the execution, if the request is happening, then you will get more, but until then you will not get more. So can you tell me what I need to do now to get a new to request for one every time I process one, 
right? That's what I would like to do, right? Every time I process something, I have to request for one more. How do I do it? Well, all I need to do is do a request in the on next. I'm going to say request of one. It's like I print this thing and I'm going to say, okay, I'm ready for one more. And now does it immediately give me that? No, it's still going to give me whenever it's ready, but I'm basically signaling up the chain that I'm ready for one more. Okay, so this is a very powerful usage of this thing. Again, I want to call out, this looks very similar to the iterator pattern where you're asking for one, like give me next, but this is not giving next. You're requesting, it's like, I am okay for this. And the event is still going to come whenever the, the sender is sending this, okay? Now, if I do this, what's going to happen is on subscribe, I'm requesting for one. So I'm going to get one. So the on next is going to execute. And when the on next, when the first item's on next executes, I'm going to request for one more, okay? And now it says, okay, I'm ready for one more. A second passes. It's going to send that. Again, the on next executes, and it's going to request for one more, right? This is how it's going to work. Now it's going to get all the items until the on complete is executed. See this? Now it's one by one. It's continuously asking for more. I can, of course, ask for, for more than one. I can ask for three, which is fine, which means that it's never going to run out of, like, it's never going to wait. Like, every time I'm handling one, I'm asking for three more. So it's it's always going to keep sending me. So as long as you're asking at least one when you handle an event, you're good to go. Okay? So you can conditionally handle it. Like, imagine a situation where you're doing some processing and you realize the array that you got was a large array. You need some time, right? So you're going to wait until the processing is done or you're going to request for a little less something like that right so those are all possibilities that you can that you can use over here all right so this is another way of doing the subscribe again not very widely used but it is invaluable if you need that control over the rate of flow okay this is what's referred to as back pressure right if somebody's sending you a lot of data and you're not able to keep up what you have is back pressure this allows you to do back pressure control by specifying how much you want to how much you want to process you know like send the request up to the top and control it 